Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on October 28th, I inquired of this government how its recent decision to exempt in situ oil sands projects from the Federal Environmental Assessment Act is consistent with their publicly expressed commitment to balanced resource development and their publicly announced new respectful working relationship with First Nations. I ask this in the wake of repeated concerns expressed by First Nations about the failure of this federal government to intervene to protect their constitutional and treaty rights. The rather confusing response by the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment was that environmental assessments are a shared responsibility between the federal and provincial governments and they, presumably the federal government, have made environmental protection laws stricter while making environmental assessments more efficient and Mr. Speaker, efficient and effective to what end, Munway validly asked, fast-tracking resource extraction by avoiding reviews and hearings? Are we to believe that exempting major projects for environmental assessments are stricter protection laws? Is this what this government considers balance? I sought this clarification as this past month the government chose, absent any consultation, to downgrade federal environmental assessment laws to exempt in situ oil sands projects from any federal review or hearing. Firstly, Mr. Speaker, the decision ignores federal jurisdiction and duties to address any transboundary impacts and overriding duties to address impacts to Aboriginal peoples, lands, and their rights and interests from resource developments. Decisions to reduce consultation on project impacts also abrogates federal crown duties of advanced consultation, consideration, and accommodation of Aboriginal right and title. Secondly, significantly delayed action to protect threatened caribou and bison herds in the wake of ongoing approvals of massive bitumen extraction projects further erodes the ability of the federal government to deliver on their languishing duties under the Species at Risk Act to protect threatened species and their critical habitat. It's noteworthy, Mr. Speaker, that today the Federal Commissioner for Sustainable Development, Environment and Sustainable Development, issued a scathing report on the abject failure of this government to comply with the prescribed mandatory duties and timelines to protect protected species and their habitats. Two of the most threatened species are the woodland bison and the boreal woodland caribou, whose critical remaining habitat is being sacrificed to expanded oil sands mines. Several new bitumen mines are approved and others in application on the habitat of two critical herds of woodland bison, the Roland Lake herd, and boreal woodland caribou. These herds graze on the lands adjacent to the Poplar Point Reserve. Residents of uh, Athabasca Chippewyan people who rely on these herds for their sustenance. The habitat has reportedly been zoned by Alberta to allow bitumen mining. Mr. Speaker, the government is making these decisions in the face of repeated requests by the First Nations to protect these herds and their habitat, in the face of decisions by the Commissioner for Sustainable Development. The federal court ruled two years ago that then Minister of Environment Jim Prentice had erred in law in holding that he was required that he was not required to consider impacts to Aboriginal right and title when making decisions under the Species at Risk Act. How many more court challenges must these impacted First Nations face before this government finally takes action to protect these threatened species and their habitat? Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government is committed to protecting the environment while supporting our economy. Canada's natural resource sector employs 1.8 million Canadians, many in skilled, high-paying jobs. Resource development generates $30 billion annually in revenue, and we are making sure that Aboriginal peoples have every opportunity to benefit from this development. Environmental assessments help us to meet these objectives, and the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act 2012 strengthens environmental protection and brings the federal regime into the 21st century. Our government is making environmental protection laws stricter while making environmental assessments more efficient and effective. Let me be clear, in situ oil sands projects have never been included as part of federal environmental legislation or regulation. Therefore, there has been no downgrading of environmental assessment. Federal permitting and approvals processes related to in situ projects have not changed. I'd like to remind the member opposite that environmental assessments are a shared responsibility between federal and provincial governments, and our government is doing our part. What our government has done is strengthen federal environmental assessment to make sure we focus on those major projects 
that have the greatest potential for significant adverse environment, environmental effects in areas of federal jurisdiction. And our government has actually increased fines and penalties for those who break environmental laws. One of the key pillars of our government's support for the responsible development of our resources is enhancing consultation with Aboriginal groups. Our government has made and continues to make significant investments that allow Aboriginal people to participate in environmental assessments. For those projects where a federal environmental assessment is required, we encourage and actively support Aboriginal participation in the environmental assessment process. The Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency provides financial assistance specifically to Aboriginal groups to prepare for and participate in consultation activities associated with environmental assessments. This financial support strengthens, strengthens the ability of Aboriginal groups to participate in the environmental assessment of major projects that affect them and helps the federal government to make better decisions that are informed by the views and perspective of Aboriginal peoples. However, building stronger relationships requires more than just consultation. Our government continues to work with Aboriginal partners in a spirit of mutual respect and collaboration to build and renew our relationships. We do this because we recognize the essential role that Aboriginal people have in the environmental stewardship of the lands and waters of our great country. Mr. Speaker, our government is proud of the work that we have done to strengthen relationships with Aboriginal peoples and we remain committed to making sure that these strong relationships continue to translate into opportunities for all Aboriginal peoples. And Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is with great interest to a reiteration again by the second parliamentary secretary to the same statements that allegedly this government has made stricter federal environmental laws. So my first question to the parliamentary secretary is going to be, I look forward to him outlining to this place what these new stricter environmental protection laws are yeah. that are going to ensure protection of First Nation rights and interests and of the threatened species. Um, and I also wonder, uh, Mr. Speaker, if the Parliamentary Secretary agrees with the recent decisions by the Alberta Energy Regulator to deny standing to First Nations and Métis in the oil science expansion projects Shame. and to deny the request for a buffer between recently appended lands for traditional harvest and a major new oil sands operation. The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Mr. Speaker, as I said previously, our government has always been and will continue to be committed to consulting with Canadians, including Aboriginal people, and giving careful consideration to their concerns. Building relationships with Aboriginal groups and encouraging and supporting their active participation in the review of projects is essential to making sure that Aboriginal peoples can benefit from the economic development opportunities associated with these projects. Aboriginal participation during environmental assessments that may affect them also helps in the decision-making process. Our government will continue to engage and consult with Aboriginal peoples as part of our support for responsible development of Canada's resources.